Welcome back to the channel everybody. So today we're going to talk about the 2021 Suzuki Hayabusa. So there's already quite a lot of videos showing content, reviews, opinion on the new 2021 bike. But I'm going to focus on a comparison between the Hayabusa that we know and love and the new model. So let's get into it. So the Suzuki GSX 1300R Hayabusa is a sports tourer that was released by Suzuki in 1999. It immediately became the world record holder of the fastest production motorcycle and the top speed was anything between 188 to 194 miles per hour. So the Hayabusa name actually is Japanese for peregrine falcon. So this is a bird that is often used as a metaphor for speed and its vertical dive can actually exceed 202 miles an hour. It's the fastest of all the birds. So obviously Suzuki wanted to borrow this name um, for their motorcycle. The other good thing about the name Hayabusa is that the peregrine falcon actually preys on blackbirds and this reflected their intent to unseat the Honda Super Blackbird as the world's fastest production bike at that time. The first generation of Boosas ran between 1999 and 2007. In 2007, they gave the bike an update. They actually reworked the engine dramatically and upped power from 174 bhp to 193. So a big uptick in power. They also made the design more muscular, but they kept some of the styling finesse that fans had come to love about the original bike. So it more or less looked like the same bike, but with little tweaks, more power, a more muscular build, and they gave the uh, clocks and driver's uh, cockpit a little bit of an update. So roll on 2020, we were beginning to hear rumours of a new Hayabusa, and in 2021, just in the last few days, we received confirmation from Suzuki that the new version of the Busa will be hitting showrooms in March. So let's have a look at the bike side by side. So if we look at the 2021 version, you can see that the whole design has been sharpened up a little bit. So if you look at the air intakes on the front, the side lights, both more angular and design, look a bit sharper. That theme is also continued with the wing mirrors. You see on the original bike, they're rounded. And then you can see on the side ventilation, uh, on the side profile of the bike, that you've got more detail there with the orange accented piece of the fairing. Coming back towards the end of the bike, you've got that textured effect just below the tank, which I guess is to allow you to grip onto the bike when you're cornering fast. And then coming back towards the end of the bike, you've got this change to the pillion seat. You've got that extra detail added on there. The exhaust looks a little bit more angular and less bulbous. And they've also changed out the wheels on the new bike to a, a seven or eight spoke design, which, which brings it all a little bit more up to date. So overall, I really like the design. Now let's take a look from the rider's perspective. So at the top left, you've got the generation one Busa. Moving across to the top right, we've got the second generation launched in 2007. And then finally, you've got the 2021, the brand new bike. So you've still got the two familiar round dials, uh, which are much loved by riders of this motorcycle. But now you've got this little TFT digital display which is going to nestle in between the, the two circular dials. The bars are actually lifted up a little bit and they're 12 millimeters uh, moved backwards. So it's going to be more comfortable if you're touring. And finally you can see new switch gear that controls the various electronic stability control modes that the new bike has. Now let's talk about the performance and handling of the two bikes. So the brakes, which were always a bit of an Achilles heel on the original Busa, have been replaced with top-end Brembo Stylema items. The discs have been up from 310mm to 320 The frame um, is exactly the same, so same material, same weight and dimensions. And the suspension, the forks and rear shock, is also the same, but Suzuki say that there are internal settings that have been modified to improve the suspension. This sounds like a bit of a cop-out from Suzuki, but if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. All the aftermarket parts, like drag, swing arms, and turbos can still be fitted because the tuners know the dimensions of the bike. All of the old stuff should transfer across to the new machine. So what about the engine? The original bike boasted a 1340cc lump, inline-four, and it produced 194bhp. 
The disappointing news is in fact that the new bike makes less top end, down to 187 bhp. Suzuki will say that while the bike's been limited to an artificial limit, 186 miles an hour, since 2000 anyway, so for 21 years the bike's been limited, the bike will still achieve the top speed, but it will get there even quicker. So the new bike actually has a better power curve, so more torque available earlier in the rev range, and they say this is the usable area where riders are most going to access that torque. The final thing I'm going to mention today is the electronic stability control systems. You've got an IMU-based traction control system, anti-wheelie system, launch control. Most of the time, you probably won't even notice these are working. They'll just be in the background. But you can turn them on you know, if it's a, a powerful bike relative to your riding ability. There'll be all sorts of modes and configurations and you can really change this as you improve as a rider. So Suzuki is saying that when you first get the bike, maybe you'll keep it for 5-10 to 10 years and you'll be able to change the settings throughout your lifetime of owning the vehicle. So obviously this was something that wasn't on the old bike at all. Uh, but you've got all these uh, electronic control systems now that have been fitted to the new machine and that'll help a lot actually um, so for myself I'd appreciate those systems. So is the new bike worth it? Well most of the components are similar, it's the same engine, the same frame, it's had a very nice cosmetic update, electronic rider aids have been added, it is now Euro 5 compliant which it would have to be to be sold here in Europe but the bike still costs £16,499 and you can pick up a Series 2 booster for between maybe five, seven, eight thousand pounds. So you're paying double the price to get the brand new machine. For some people, that's gonna be worth it. Just to have the latest and greatest. It's obviously gonna be a beast to ride. It's gonna be hugely enjoyable. But for me, I would probably look about at getting a second hand booster first um, and see how the new model reviewed when you know long term owners have been able to voice their opinions on the machine. But you know, fair play to Suzuki for bringing back a legend awesome bike you know it's a dream bike it's a hyper bike something we've aspired all aspired to ride um, and it's against the backdrop of, of sports bikes being less popular and even the 600 classes of sports bike really being phased out you've still got the the thousands um, but it, yeah it, it's it's good for them really to, to revive the legend and I'm sure everyone's super enthusiastic about it so well done Suzuki well done guys you made it to the end of the video if you did like what you saw today, please do hit the like button and write a comment if you agree or disagree with what we've said about the Suzuki Hayabusa. That would be great. If you really, really like the content and the other videos on the channel, then please do consider subscribing.